Hi everybody, welcome back to HD Piano, this is Joe. Today we are learning about Can't Pretend by Tom Adele, another one of his. And this is the first chorus, the second chorus, and the fourth chorus. Sounds like this. Two, three, four. Then we jump to chorus two, which sounds like this, very similar. Okay, and then we skip all the way to chorus four, the ending, which is similar. Three, four. And those are the last notes of the song. Okay, so we've got the first and the last notes of the song there. This is middle C. We're playing in the key of C sharp minor today. C sharp minor harmonic to be precise. So this has a raised seventh note there. So we've got a B sharp that will be showing itself throughout this piece of music. But in our key signature, F, C, G and D sharps to deal with. But then outside of the key signature, B sharp to think about because of the harmonic minor. Quick question for you. He only got to number 67 in the charts in the UK for this song. And that was in 2013. So the charts sort of became slightly less relevant than they are now and certainly were when I was uh, following them avidly as a youngster. Where did he get highest in the world with this particular track? Quite interesting. Obviously, go on, YouTube, uh, go on Wikipedia to find this out. Anyway, so here we are. We're playing, first of all, the key chord in its first inversion in the right hand. And we're playing half notes. These are two beats long. That's C-sharp minor, second, sorry, first inversion with C-sharp in the bass. One, two, and then that. Now this is G-sharp seven, second inversion. Second inversion if we're going from here. Actually, you know what, let's go from, the, let's, let's treat these all as um, entirely open inversions, i.e. both hands. So it's root position, C sharp minor. Even though we're playing first position in the right hand, because C sharp's our lowest note, it's the root position. That's our first chord. And then after that, second position, G sharp seventh. Now, G sharp seventh, because we've got the fifth note of G sharp, the seventh note of G sharp, the root note, and the third note. Okay. You could call that a third inversion in the right hand, but because we're going to be dealing with these across the Two hands, we're gonna call that second inversion G sharp seven. Let's do those two chords again. One, two, three, four. That's the first two chords of the piece. And those chords come back again and again. Last time, we're gonna move on next time. Now next time we go back to the same chord in the right hand, but a different note in the left hand. That means the inversion has changed, hence why the sound has changed. And this is first position C sharp minor. This is a fantastic example, this particular piece of music, in how to invert chords. Simple chords, really, but remain really nice and tasty in their sound. I've had this given to me many times in my media composition as a track that people want to emulate. Because the chords are so emotive, and also it sort of doesn't really stop. You feel like it's continuous. So there we are. This is C sharp minor first position here with our third note, third degree in the bass, are you making this a C-sharp first position? And then finally a new chord, F-sharp minor root position. And that is root position in both hands. So first position in C-sharp minor, F-sharp minor root position again. And then one more time. And now we've gone all the way with our C sharp minor. Back to that same chord in the right hand, but now G sharp in the bass, which means it's second position G sharp, C sharp minor. Like that. And then that same G sharp minor chord in the right hand, but with the G sharp minor in the bass, meaning this is now its root position. Okay? 
the second position C sharp minor root position G sharp 7 again one more time with that second position C sharp minor root position G sharp 7 and then back to that first position C sharp minor bar and root position F sharp minor so we've done that one already and you just repeat that's the intro let's do it all again and I'll speak root position C sharp minor second position G sharp 7 first position C sharp minor root position F sharp minor second position C sharp minor root position G sharp 7 first position C sharp minor root position F sharp minor line 2 same again root position C sharp minor second position G sharp 7 first position C sharp minor root position F sharp minor second position C sharp minor root position G sharp 7 first position C sharp minor root position F sharp minor and that's it one two three four this is the proper speed and this is played quietly although my compressor is probably making it sound like it's not quiet but there you go that's life okay that's chorus one chorus two is almost identical here we go Apart from this time, we've got a thickened up G sharp 7 chord. We're no longer just playing it in this like third position shape, which I know we're speaking about it across the hand, so we're talking about this as a second position because D sharp's the lowest note, but really we've added D sharp here as well. So this is truly now C sharp second position between the hands. Root position, sorry, root position C sharp minor, second position G sharp 7. We've got a full four note chord there. Let's go between those two again. Two, four. One more time with that. One, two, three, four. Next bar we know. C sharp minor first position. Next beat we know. F sharp minor root position. And this one we know too. C sharp minor second inversion. Ah, new one. Because last time we were going like that. But this time, no seven. So this is just a G sharp major root position. No seven that time, just D sharp major, and that's lovely because it really gives you a sort of clarity of sound at this point. Sounds beautiful. So one more time with that. G sharp minor second position. G sharp but root position, and then T sharp minor first position, and then F sharp minor root four and, and on beat four and you go back to the C sharp minor first position early, like this. One two three and four and one two and then you end on f sharp minor second position because c sharp's now the lowest note so one two three and four and one two three four again one two three and four and one two three just like that right now let's scoot ahead this is chorus four so now let's just i know we've been talking across the hands but now let's just talk about just the right hand because the left hand is exactly the same we're now doing second position here instead of first position second position we're higher the whole time now and then to our slightly more open as in there's bigger spread between the notes in the right hand of G sharp 7 so second position in the right hand C sharp minor slightly more open third inversion G sharp 7 in the right hand cool, that's a lot of words like that and then this 7 3 5 one more time with that and then this now we remain with our C sharp minor in that position and our F sharp minor guess what it's no longer in its root position in the right hand We've inverted it upwards, so inverted upwards, inverted upwards, inverted upwards, and then 
this is inverted upwards as well. So everything's just inverted upwards. So let's go back to the C sharp minor and then F sharp minor. First position just in the right hand. Remember, I'm just talking about the right hand inversions here. C sharp minor, second position just in the right hand. G sharp major, root position just in the right hand. And that second position, C sharp minor, just in the right hand. And F sharp minor, first position just in the right hand. There's too many words here. It's quite early as well. So everything's just inverted up by one in the right hand, basically which for you aspiring music writers is a great thing to do to add variation. If you're looking at a section like a chorus or a verse, which is going to be repeating, just think about inverting upwards. And that's it. I just played the second line, okay, which on that last F sharp minor first position just in the right hand, we are holding on for eternity or as long as you like. Okay, that's it. If you hear all those again, I think I'd better play all of them again. So we'll start off with our chorus one. Four, one, two. And then we scoot ahead to chorus two. Here it is. And then we scoot all the way to the end for chorus four. Two, three, four. the end of the song and the end of this video if you like that head on over to the website hdpiano.com where all the other parts will be laid out before you and if you're on youtube like subscribe comment answer the question all that stuff see you on the next video bye for now this has been joe hd piano cheers